This is a really handy cutting mat or ruler carrier, particularly if you're going to go to any kind of craft class or a sewing class and you wanted to protect your ruler while looking rather stylish at the same time. Um, I've made this one for a 12 inch ruler, but I will explain in the video how you're going to measure. So it may be for a smaller cutting mat. It could even be for books if you wanted to. I've put two pockets on the front. I'll explain how to do that obviously in the video, but you can add more if you wanted to. And I've just put one strap going over the top to close it over as well. Ever so simple to make, but I think you'll find it really useful, even for storage. So this could be somewhere to hang your cutting mats and your rulers, maybe on the back of a door when you're not using them, keeping things nice and tidy and keeping you organised. Now, it is quite similar to a project in my Sewing Room Accessories book. Um, that one's got more pockets in it, but it's just a different variation. But with this one, I wanted to explain to you how to actually make the bag so that it fits your requirements perfectly. So let's get sewing. So measure the size of your ruler or your mat if that's what you're using and you need to cut your fabric, you need four squares of fabric, um, about an inch larger all the way around. When you've cut out your pieces of fabric you're then going to chop off the corners and again you can gauge this to see exactly way, how you want that to fit. So my bag is going to be quite snug. I've just cut off the corners at around about four inches from the side here so that so that the corners of your mat or, or your um, ruler are exposed so it's easier to take it in and out of the bag because this is going to be quite a snug fit. If you want to put more than one ruler or mat inside here, make it a little bit bigger so you've got more room inside. So I'm going to need, just put that to one side for a second, two pieces from lining. Mine are slightly different in colours because I've used a fat quarter pack. And then two pieces from the outside, all the same size. And on the outer pieces, I've put some wadding on the back of here. And this is just a wool wadding. You could use a polyester wadding. You could use a fusible fleece. It's just something to give the bag a little bit more structure and a little bit more padding, something to help protect your ruler while it's in there. Um, I'm also using another couple of pieces from my fat quarter pack to make the pocket across the front. And with this one, it can be as deep as you like, so again it depends on the size of your bag and what you need to put in it, so you can tailor make this to fit your, uh, your bag perfectly. So two pieces measuring exactly the same. Mine are about six and a half inches deep and I've cut this to an inch wider and that's because when I actually put the bag together it's going to have a little pleat in the centre of the pocket to act like a little bit of a gusset, so I've got, I've got some room to actually put things in there. I'm also using one inch wide webbing, this is cotton webbing, and I'm going to make the handles out of this. And again, you're making this um, to fit your um, products personally. So maybe you want a shoulder strap, maybe you just want a short handle, that's entirely up to you. And I'm also going to make a strap to go over the top to fasten this over with, um, using the webbing with, some, um, with a magnetic snap to fasten it. So let's get putting it together. The first thing I'm going to do is make the pocket. So you can put pockets on both sides if you like. I'm just going to put it on one side, but exactly the same process if you want to repeat on the other side. So take my two pieces. It could be one piece folded in half if you've got a larger piece of fabric. And I'm going to sew these two pieces together right sides across the top. So bring in the machine. Move the dog out of the way. Come on. <laughs> Come on. She has to sit on the foot pedal. Come here. Out of the way. Go on. Good girl. Okay. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just sew straight across. Let's line up those edges a bit better. Now I'd normally have the iron on at this point and press this, but I'll see if I can get away with just creasing it with my fingers because this is 100% cotton so it's nice and crisp and it just crease very well, which is what we want. It's fabulous. So with the seam just on the top, I'm going to top stitch straight across there and that's going to make it look neat. 
I don't need to sew the sides <coughs> excuse me, and the, the bottom of the pocket together because those will disappear into the seams of the bag. Oh, my thread's just come under. There we go. And you can decorate this as much as you like. So if you um, have some decorative stitches on your sewing machine or if you're using a planar fabric, you could quilt these. You could add a little bit of wadding or batting to the, um, to the pocket as well. You could make little pen pockets so you can put smaller dividers in there. So you, you really can tailor make this into whatever kind of craft bag you want it to be. You could even make it a little larger to give more room for the ruler and put some pockets on the inside as well. So it's entirely up to you. I'm giving you the basics. You can do what you like with them. Take this out. There. We'll arrange this on the front of the bag. <clears throat> now then, I'm going to find the centre point by folding it in half and creasing. If you've got a fabric that doesn't crease so well, then draw a line with an erasable ink pen. What do you want? We're going to take a puppy break for just a second because I think she's lost a toy under the table. I should be back in a moment. It was a ball under the table. Right, so I've got the centre point marked here. Now I'm going to join the edges of the pocket to the edges of the bag. So I'll just sew straight down each side here. I'll have a, a pin in there just to hold them in place. And the same on that side. And I'll tell you what we'll do while we're here as well, is mark the centre, in fact I'll measure that, match up the centre of my ruler, uh, sorry, the centre of the pocket with the centre of the bag. Because I'm going to go straight down there as well, down the line that I've just creased here. So inside the seam allowance, so just close to the edge, this is just tacking or basting the pieces together as I sew. And we'll do this on all those pieces, all those sides. So straight down the side, straight down the middle, and then straight down the other side. Quite long stitches on this one, because they're only tacking stitches. Take the pin out as we go. down that crease mark to form the two pockets but again if you wanted to uh, make more pockets more dividers then do feel free it's your bag do what you like with it when I get to the end of the pocket here I'm just going to reverse a few stitches backwards just to strengthen that seam off neatly and then the tacking stitch down the last side here Now I'm going to put a stitch across the bottom in just a second to hold this pleat in place. So where my pocket is here, I'm going to flatten that out and fold the side of the fabric into the crease, uh, into the seam at the, at the front here. So that creates a little bit of depth. So I can get bigger things in there basically. And I'm just going to sew across the crease at the bottom just to hold that in place. So there we go, there's my pockets on the front. Next up we're going to put the handles on. So I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of mark these by eye. I don't want them too long. I think that's fine. So 
my handles are going to measure, where are you? 16 inches. So I have two of those. And then I've got a little bit left over to make my strap with. That's about five inches long that's left. So these need to be facing inwards. These straps fray like mad, but these are going to be sewn into a seam, so I'm not too worried about them here. Um, but if, if you are concerned, if it really does fray a lot, then just trim the ends of them with pink inches and that should stop it. Or you could hold them over the flame of a candle or a lighter and very carefully just singe the ends of them and that stops them fraying as well. Now when I'm putting my strap onto the top of my bag, do take into account you've got a seam allowance. So there's a seam allowance that goes atop here, but you've also got a seam allowance that goes down the side here. So if I put my strap right up to the edge, by the time this is all sewn together, the strap's going to be at a very funny angle because it'll be trapped in the seam. So I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Move your strap at least a quarter of an inch away from that corner, a little bit more to be on the safe side. And then I'll pop a pin in there and do the same on the other side. So bring the strap around so that it's not twisted and then fit this the same distance on the other side and then we'll do the same with the opposite side of the bag. So this is the padded bit remember. So I'm going to place the two pieces on top of each other so I've got the strap in exactly the same place so I can line those up like so Make sure it's not twisted. And we'll have a pin in there. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is to put my strap in that seam as well. So this is the back of the bag. Just facing inwards again, right in the centre in between those two handles. And we'll pin here. And then so. Take your pins out as you go and these stitches again are just going inside the seam allowance. Jump across there a little bit. So we're left with this. So let's trim off the loose threads. On this side. Now I'm going to put the magnetic snap on next before I put the lining because I don't want to see the lining on the inside. So to mark exactly where that needs to go, I'm going to put the, the two pieces of the bag together as if it was as if it was completed. Right. So there's my handles I've just sewn on, and there's my strap, and that's going to go over the front. Now because the end of that strap frays, as I said earlier on, I'm going to fold it over and my magnetic snap is going to go on this side here. So the thin part of the snap goes on, um, there we go, the thin part of the snap goes on the flap and the fat part goes on the actual bag. So that's just going to go in the back here. So I need to make two little holes, you can mark these first, where those two side pieces are going to go here. Make the holes as small as you can, so either with your quick and pick or a very sharp pair of small scissors. Snap goes in there. Oops, come in. Put the backing on. Push the prongs inwards. That's it. And then this is going to fold over. 
and I'm going to sew across the top and what I'm also going to do here is to put some strong wet glue just behind there just to keep it nice and firm. So I'm going to mark where that flap comes over, the strap comes over here. I need to keep it quite loose because my, um, my ruler may stick out the top a little bit. I don't want it to be too tight. So this is just to stop it falling open. So let's fold that over. I'm just going to mark with my quick unpick and we'll do the same on this side. So little holes again. Where have you gone? There you are. Wider part goes through here. Pop the backing on. Squish the prongs open. That's that. Right, so I'll glue that. need to leave that to dry for a couple of seconds, then we'll start putting the whole bag together. Now we're going to take the, two, the both of the outer pieces and sew them right sides together around the top of the lining piece. So there's the front of my bag. There's the lining, right sides together. And we need to sew on the top three sides. So we'll hold that with a few pins. Just down that side. So again, take your pins out as you go. Sew into the corner and stop with the needle in the down position. And then sew straight across. Now you can feel when you come to the handles, if you're going to be carrying something quite heavy, I would reverse back over the handles and then carry on sewing. And that's just going to strengthen the seam over where the handles are. It's just a ruler or a mat you're carrying, then I wouldn't worry too much about that. So again, into the corner, turn around and back down the final side. Needle up. There we go. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the fabric on the corners here and that helps to reduce the bulk of the fabric so when I turn it the right side out um, it gets a, a sharper point and you can see how now the bags come in together. Now we're going to put the two sides together. I've already sewn together the top of the opposite side. So make sure the front goes with the front and the lining goes with the lining. And you need to match up the seam where you just stop sewing. So at the end of the, um, the corner pieces on the side, match those seams up. Because you'll tell if you don't from the outside. And we're just going to sew one half at a time. So we'll sew the outside together first, then we'll sew the lining pieces together. So same on this side, line up those two seams and stick a pin in. There we go. Now then, when you start to sew, you're going to start to sew from the actual stitch line where you've just finished, so right on top of that seam. If you have a locking stitch on your machine, um, or a, a, just a couple of reversing stitches to strengthen it would be good, but try not to go over that seam that you've just sewn. So 
straight into the corner. I'm going to go all the way around the bottom sides. So now flip over the top of the bag, both sides, and we're going to do exactly the same around the lining. So we're starting from exactly the same position, right over the top of that side seam. I'm not going to pin this time. And then in the bottom of this section, we're going to leave a gap so that we can turn the whole thing the right side out. Now then, let's cut off the corners again. Under my lining. Then we'll turn it through the gap that we left in the bottom. the corners where the handles are. Push out the corners of the actual bag. So we're looking a little bit like this, which doesn't make too much sense at the moment, but it will when the lining goes inside. So where the gap was in the bottom of the lining, pull the two sides open like this, and you'll see that the, the edges of the fabric fold in, and I'm going to sew straight across there on my sewing machine. Right, so now the lining gets pushed inside the bag. So I'm going to take this over to the iron now and give it a good old press. And then just to finish it off, I'm going to top stitch just around the top section just to give it a nice neat edge. I'll be back in a second. Well, there we go. Things always look better when they're pressed, don't they? Um, the final stage here is to put my top stitching just around the top. That'll make it look nice and neat. And then if you wanted to, you could add a few buttons or embellishments or a little bit of decoration and make it, uh, make it even more personal. So I always like to start any kind of top stitching, if I can, right over the top of a side seam. So if I don't get the join perfect when I come around stitching, um, you're not really going to see it because it's hidden. So this is just a little way away from the edge, a longer stitch because this is not really serving any purpose apart from holding those layers together. It doesn't have to be strong in other words. 
I do like top stitching. I like top stitching on the top of a bag. I like it around the flap of a bag. I just think it gives a, a finished look to your project. A contrast thread would look nice if you're confident with your sewing and sewing in a straight line because of course the contrast thread is, is going to stand out. If you're not too confident then use the same colour thread. So stop right over that side seam again. Let's turn around. Almost finished. sure all of your straps and everything are out of the way so we don't want to be sewing sewing them to the bag so to speak Idea of loose threads at the side here. So this one's there. We're all ready to go.